Hey guys, this is Mac Rizzi Outdoors. Today I'm going to cover how to make char cloth. Uh, I'm trying a new fabric. This is like a um, construction type, um, almost like Carhartt pant material. What you want is 100% cotton. It's a little thicker and the fiber is a little bigger is why I'm trying this, just to see what it does. And I've just got it in a, uh, a tin with a little hole punched in the top. You want to seal that in. You don't want it packed too tight in there. You want it to breathe and burn. We get a better result that way, and we'll go over to fire here and show you show you what it looks like. All right, guys, here we've got our uh, so the wood furnace here. It's going pretty good right now. Uh, typically, I would put this just kind of as it dies down in the front with some coals. Uh, this will work to speed up the process a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in. Again, you're gonna watch for smoke coming out the hole, and when this hole uh, when the smoke stops coming, it's typically when you want to pull it off. And you want to plug that hole also. I'll show you that process too. We got a fire. I'm just going to set it right here where it can get torched. Let it get warm a little bit here, and we'll see the uh, see the smoke starting to come out of it in a, in a couple seconds. But if you have a fireplace, it's a good way to make it, or over a campfire. A lot of times, you don't have the time to get out and build a campfire and you want to get stocked up on it. I normally will take an old pair of pants or a shirt and uh, cut it up into little squares and do it as I have time. You know, this is lit every day, so. But, uh, yeah, see, I don't know if you can see that. The smoke coming out the hole there. You'll kind of watch that and probably, probably a good 10 minutes or so. Maybe not as much depending on how hot it is. But it'll burn, out all, burn off all the uh, stuff it can without oxygen, and then it uh, turns it into char cloth. So we'll uh, check up on it as soon as it's done here. All right, guys, here you can see it stopped smoking. So we'll go ahead and get that out. I've got another one to put in. Uh, even, if we, even if you have gloves, guys, don't go and uh, grab these out because they're the metal gets super hot. Even with leather gloves, it'll shrink the fingertips of your gloves. It's slippery there. Again, you're going to want to go ahead and plug that hole so it, don't, so it doesn't light back up. And here I'm going to put in a, a fresh one. I like to keep them rotating when I'm doing them so I can uh, get a bunch of them done at once. But in a couple minutes, that'll start smoking. And I'll let this one cool and I'll show you what it looks like. Alright guys, it's been about five minutes. I've got it pulled out of the oven. It's cool to the touch. Now one thing you're looking for is that it's uh, black all the way through. This stuff looked like it did really good. There's no uh, color spots or light spots, so let's take a piece and try it. You always want to try it, at least a piece of it, to see what it does. This fabric is, is a little different than your standard t-shirt that I normally use, so I was kind of curious to see how it would work. Uh, I never test them on just like a ferro rod, because ferro rods will start a lot. Test them with a flint and steel. You see a glow in there, so it takes a spark pretty good off the flint and steel. The flint and steel isn't as hot as a ferro rod. A ferro rod would light this every time, so... You see this grows. It's good to have some of this stuff with you because uh, where this also comes in handy is if you're using a magnifying lens for a fire. Uh, this stuff lights really nice that way. And here's a ferro rod. Let's scrape off the coating. You can see that lights it. You get a spark to land on it, it lights it too. But a magnifying glass on these really, really does a nice job. So I always keep, I actually keep a, a wad of this in a little tiny Ziploc bag duct taped to the back of my Kaminga compass. That way I've always got it with, with the magnifying lens on my compass. But you can tell this, this uh, heavy duty pant material, uh, and this is what it is. I said it's like off of a, it's a pair of my carpenter pants is what it is, but you see the fibers on here, and it's real, Real nice and fine. Actually, he's grabbing the sparks pretty good, so it's not as tightly woven, I don't think, as some of the t-shirt stuff, but it's heavier, so. 
very sure you that. Um, I said this stuff's good to keep you on keeping in a dry bag some somehow, whether it's a little Ziploc baggie. Uh, typically, I'll keep a big wad of it in here just with my uh, flint and steel. These little Ziploc bags work really well too. You can keep it in kits and stuff. Um, I wouldn't rely on this solely. You know, if it's raining or something, you still want to have like cotton balls and Vaseline or uh, something with wax in it. But uh, it's a good alternative, something to play around with, and it conserves your. Uh, Cotton balls and Vaseline for when you really need it when it's uh, when it's wet out. So hope this helps somebody. Any questions? Feel free to ask. Uh, probably doing more of these vids as as we go along with this fire series that I'm going to be starting. But um, it's very video of this and show you show you it while I'm doing it. So just playing around with some different stuff. I've got a whole whole pile of this to do yet. So all right, guys. Thanks for watching. Again, uh, any questions? Feel free to ask and. Uh, have a good afternoon.